I do want to take this opportunity to welcome our distinguished guest, uh, Chancellor Woodson, his wife Susan, friends of Sigma Nu and Beta Tall, and fellow Knights. Uh, today is a culmination of a long journey that began in April 1895 as the Beta Tall chapter was founded at the Park Hotel, downtown Raleigh. As we move through this program, uh, my hope is that we again experience the brotherhood, the fellowship you enjoy during your collegiate time and days of night as a knight in the chapter of Beta Tall and Sigma Nu. Um, Braxton is going to give us a prayer now, please. We could all bow our heads, please. To believe in the life of love, to walk in the way of honor, to serve in the light of truth. This is the life, the way, and the light of Sigma Nu. This is the creed of our fraternity. In October 1868, three young cadets at VMI, James Frank Hopkins, Greenfield Quarles, and James McElvain Riley, placed their hands on a Bible and started the Legion of Honor. On January 1st of 1869, Sigma Nu was born. These three young men started the fraternity to battle against hazing, oppression, and the injustices of the day. Now, some 145 years later, we stand here on this January afternoon on the campus of North Carolina State University in the new home of the Beta Tall chapter of Sigma Nu, still seeking young men who will be dedicated to the same three principles, love, honor, and truth. Our biblical past needs to be ever present in our dedicated future. As John 14, 6 says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let us all remember these blessed words as the true guidance for all men. Now as we bow our heads, I ask God to bless this house and all who dwell here, past, present, and future. May the Lord's almighty hand guide us on the pathway, and many, may all the men of Sigma Nu be steadfast in the strength of the Lord. May each be led by our founding principles of love, honor, and truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This time, Dr. Woodson. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. You know, it was appropriate that Sigma Nu was started in the Park Hotel because the brothers of Sigma Nu at NC State certainly are living in a hotel now. <laughs> uh, this is a great facility, and I, I couldn't be more proud. Today, we celebrate the success of the Beta Tall chapter of Sigma Nu the first fraternity founded at NC State. It's also the first fraternity to move on to fraternity court at NC State in the 1960s. And those of us that have been around a while and those of you that have seen it since the 60s know that it still looks the same. <laughs> and this is a great uh, new chapter for Greek Village. And now Sigma Nu is the first fraternity to be a part of this great new Greek Village. There's much to celebrate. Sigma Nu men live by the principles of love, honor, and truth. And it's easy to see the love of fraternity as I look around this room today. The bonds created through the shared experiences which perpetuate lifelong friendship and commitment to fraternity. That commitment to fraternity is what is made possible today. Commitment and generosity demonstrated by men like Howard Pickett, Randy Ward, Ward Eddie Guntram, and Richard Vaughn in his ever-present red blazer. Without them, the dream of this new home could not have been accomplished. For your donation of time and treasure, thank you. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> to the countless other alumni that contributed to the success of this project, we offer our sincere appreciation. You know, it's been said that it takes a village, and Lord knows it took a village to bring this about. We also appreciate the hard work of Mary Pelican Dodd, Associate Vice Chancellor, I think Mary's in the back somewhere, for Finance and Business, and Laura Ratchford from the General Counsel Office. They worked tirelessly. They knew how important this project was to the university, to the men of Sigma Nu, but also to Greek Village. Uh, it was critical that we break down some barriers and develop processes where we could get this done. 
And Mary and Laura deserve a lot of credit from the university side for being diligent in that effort. Thank you all for your contributions. Also to Paragon Bank, the university appreciates your investment and your commitment to student housing of the fraternity men at NC State. This is an amazing house. Uh, it's a great example of what Greek Village planning team envisioned when this all got started and a great role model for others thinking about continuing this tradition of building out the Greek Village. We appreciate everyone's persistence, and I know it took persistence, to bring this, these details together. Greek Village will be in an incredible community. It's on that path now, and that path is made clear by the hard work of the men of Sigma Nu and the university and all those that worked hard to make this a reality. So congratulations to all. I'm very proud to be with you today, and best of luck at the end. I know uh, you're excited to be in this new home. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure the Active Brotherhood is looking forward to moving into the new chapter house. On their behalf, I would like to have the present commander, Bobby Porter. My only disappointment uh, about the house right now is that news crews aren't lined out out front to showcase it to the world. Because <laughs> I know an incredible amount of work uh, was required to get this built for us. Um, I'd like to take a moment to thank Howard Pickett. I know he put in a ton of work to uh, work with our active brothers and to make sure that we're able to live in this house this semester. Um, when I came into the fraternity in the fall of 2011, this was just a dream. And now I'm able to live in the dream of the brothers before me. And that is an incredible blessing. So I'd like to thank you all for being here and thank all the alumni for being present and all the hard work that it took to be here right now. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Um, soon you'll have an opportunity to tour the house. I'm sorry that we kept you all down here, but we wanted to have this ceremony before everybody had a chance for a tour. Um, but this is going to be the finest chapter house at North Carolina State University and maybe the finest chapter house anywhere in the country. Um, with thanks, I would like to introduce the general contract to Barry Henning, the president of the Mega Construction. Isn't it uh, great to see a vision come to fruition? Uh, I know this vision for the Beta Tau chapter of Sigma Nu started long before Omega Construction uh, became involved. But on the construction side, I remember the day that uh, in mid to early 2011, Richard Vaughn stepped into my office, announced the project to me, and said, my fraternity is building a fraternity house, and, and we're going to build it. And uh, we started the budgeting process, and he said, of course, we have to meet budget and schedule. So we started the budgeting process, and as Eddie knows, we budgeted, uh, we value engineered, we redesigned, we rebudgeted, we re, re value engineered, we redesigned, and finally came to uh, an acceptable balance of features, quality, and cost that you can see here before you today. Uh, one thing that was not negotiable was schedule. Uh, I've worked for uh, Richard for 27 years uh, during my career, and Richard's given me opportunities that I'll never be able to repay him for. But I can tell you that none of that equates to any leniency on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably had uh, 25 emails during the year from Richard reminding me of the completion date. And I can only, I can only tell him, Richard, we've got a great team put together, and we will meet the schedule. Uh, we started layout for the building in January 2013, on January 14th. Two weeks later, uh, we had the site graded. We were ready to start putting in, putting in foundations. Uh, the first minute we started digging the foundations, we had to stop. We had unsuitable soil. We had to deal with that, and on February 5th, 2013, we had the, the uh, occasion to pour the first concrete foundation. So that's the date the first foundation was poured. Uh, once we poured the foundations and got started on the foundation walls around the building, I don't know who ordered it, but somebody opened the floodgates and the rain started. In the uh, normal year, we get this much rain. In 2013, we were blessed, and we got this much rain. We had about a 40% uh, increase in the, in the rain during the year uh, from, from a normal uh, perspective. 
However, construction progressed. I still continue to get the emails from Richard that reminded me what the completion date was. So they never, they never changed. Uh, through a lot of hurdles, um, bumps, and a lot of hard work and dedication, uh, we got to where we are today and to this fine facility you see in front of you. Uh, a couple of quick thank yous for uh, some people that were involved in it. Again, uh, number one is uh, Howard Pickett. Uh, Howard, I've never seen anybody that had the commitment of an individual that Howard had to this project and the number of countless hours and the efforts he spent on this project were just unbelievable. So, uh, so Howard, uh, thank you for all the work you've done on it. Just uh, simply <laughs> uh, the, the number of hours that Richard spent on the project, uh, a lot of it was behind the scenes that a lot of people didn't see because it was in calls and and meetings on the on the budget and trying to get everything worked out and ready to start. But I wish my compensation for the year was based on the number of emails and phone calls between Howard and Richard, because uh, it would have been a, it would have been a good year for me if the compensation was based on based on those, because I know they spent countless hours on the phone and, and email. Richard's even getting a little bit proficient in email now with his with his talks. Um, Eddie Gottrop can't say enough about what Eddie has done uh, for the project and the facility that that Eddie designed. Uh, if you took Eddie's compensation and divided it by the number of hours, you probably come up less than minimum wage uh, for what he's done on the project. But I can't say this for all architects I've ever worked with, but we certainly enjoyed working with Eddie in the project that he's, that he's designed here. It's just a, an outstanding facility uh, for what he's done. Uh, I would like to mention our uh, construction team. Uh, Donnie Fletcher is project manager and Roger Nugent as superintendent, uh, they're the guys that are actually responsible for building what you see here today. Um, they've done an outstanding job and shown tremendous dedication for this project in, uh, in constructing this facility and what you see with the quality that they've met today and its own budget and its own time. So we can't say uh, much more about what they, what they have done. <laughs> and of course, every time I got one of those emails from Richard, I would step two doors down, stick my head in Donnie's door and say, Donnie, we are still on schedule, aren't we? <laughs> and uh, Donnie would confirm that, that we were, and, and we appreciate that. Donnie's done an outstanding job as a project manager on this job, and, and really want to thank him for doing it. Uh, as anyone in construction knows, your, your superintendent is the make or break person on the project. And Richard and I have worked with uh, Roger Nugent for approaching 30 years now and knew that Roger Nugent was the man for this job. And Roger's done an outstanding job here. And I want to say thank you, Roger and Donnie, for a job well done. The, uh, I'd like to leave you with a few, being a uh, BSCE 1984 here, I'm a numbers guy, uh, civil engineering. And I'd like to leave you, I always like to leave with a few statistics on the projects that we construct. Uh, the building is 21,000 square feet. It took 475 cubic yards of concrete to build the building. It took 35 tons of structural steel, 65,000 brick. It took 3,000 pieces of precast, 52 tons of HVAC for the mechanical, 2,600 linear feet, almost half a mile of sprinkler pipe because there's two levels of sprinkler in a lot of the floors. There's six and a half miles of electrical wiring, uh, control wiring, and fire alarm wiring. The most important numbers is there's 37 happy fraternity brothers that are going to now have a place <laughs> to stay. And the most important number is there's one happy customer uh, that has a fine facility that we're, we're proud to have been involved in. And I want to say thank you for the project, for allowing us to be involved as a mega construction, and uh, we're certainly delighted to be able to have constructed the project. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Um, I'm going to read this next one. It's called Night's Journey. Um, it's kind of personal, so deal with me for it. Um, like anything, life is a journey. This particular journey begins, as most journeys do, in a small town in eastern North Carolina. The only fame this small town had was barbecue and a place to stop when you're going from Raleigh to Atlantic Beach. New sports shop. In this town, there were two friends, Carol Kratzer and Reese Walter, and they were deciding to where to go to college. Everywhere else in this town, sadly, 
and these were dis deranged people, <laughs> wanted to pursue their fictional town called Blue Heaven. Since Carol and I graduated from Granger High School, where the mascot was the Red Devil, we left and felt we should go to the Red School. So our parents dropped us off at North Carolina State University as roommates. Our first thought for a mere second was academics. After that, we said, where should we go party? <laughs> we had an acquaintance at the Delta Sig House, so we went there, had a good time, got a bid, but kept looking for a better party. My brother-in-law was at SAE, so we went to the SAE house, had a good time, had a good party, got another bid. Then Carol said, hey, my brother was a Sigma Nu, let's go there. So we did. Wow. We arrived and the house was packed with the most attractive girls I'd ever seen. <laughs> Everyone was partying, having a great time, and yes, drinking, dancing to the combo to beach music. And everybody knows that, uh, forget that. Anyway, the band stopped and there was a break. I thought everybody would leave the room, but no. This guy, a Sigma Nu, got up in the middle of the entire Lodge Brothers and started to sing. Song after song after song, and he was always the loudest and the most enthusiastic. What passion. That was the first time I met Johnny Mac. So we joined, and luckily, Carol and I became Pledge Brothers, and the rest is now history. To this day, I don't know where I would be without Beta Tall Chapter and Sigma Nu. My closest friends are three of my Lodge brothers, Buddy Starnes, Frank Beard, and Don Carlo. Although we live in different cities, for each year, over 40 years, we have had the same vacation time in the North Carolina mountains. Some of us need to work through college, and I had to be one of those people that worked during college. So I needed somewhere to work. So I needed somewhere on Hillsborough Street that was close. So I went into Varsity Benswear and met Dickie Hardy, another made a tall Lodge brother. So I worked with Dickie for my entire years through college. It was a great time, and I learned a lot from there. I was soon to graduate, and Dickie offered me a job to stay on his full-time at Varsity Menswear. I told Dickie that would be great, but I need a real job. <laughs> As chance would have it, two days later after that, a couple came into Varsity Menswear, a tall, blonde-haired guy and this crazy, good-looking woman following behind. That was the first time I met Frank Wright. Frank Wright had a small medical distribution company with two employees, and he offered me the position to be the third. And I worked for Frank for eight years. Uh, being single at the time, I was always invited by Frank and Bernadine to go to their house for a free meal, which I readily accepted. I also invited myself to any party they went to. Uh, those attending would often be Robert Boyette, Jerry Quick, Dick Legrand, Eddie Edgar, and Animal. It's Bob Evans, anybody know who Animal is. Um, there was one Halloween and Frank said, we're going to go to the country to a Halloween party at Movers. I said, what's a mover? And that was the first time I met Randy Ward. The party was at Randy's farm. There was a small cabin that Randy had built himself, but the party was in an old house that was on the farm property. It was a great party, lots of people, and there were coffins too. Uh, this was all BB and BS before the barn and before Susan. <laughs> My territory in the rental company with Frank had established was from Greensboro to the coast. And I stayed with my parents when I went on the east coast to Kenston, but I needed someplace cheap to stay in Fayetteville. Frank said, let's go see Troll. I said, what's a Troll? That's when I met Bob Caudle. And for five years, every other Wednesday, Bob and Bonnie Caudle had me at their home and had me dinner and a place to stay for that entire time that I worked for Frank. Uh, I mentioned my friend Don Carlo earlier, a pledge brother of mine. Don and Joyce had a son named Matt, and Don and Joyce never really cared about taking care of um, making Matt real safe, so he was always getting hurt, so we would take Matt to the ER. So Matt, Don and I take Matt to the ER. He's bleeding profusely, but we know he's okay. And the nurse comes in and says, the doctor will be right with you, Dr. Williams. We went, Dr. Williams. So. A few minutes later, Dr. Jack Williams comes in, another beta tall uh, fraternity brother, who at the time when he was in college was a very liberal designer and now was head of the ER at Rex Hospital. Uh, Matt saw Dr. Jack often. Even as adults, we need a physician. I am fortunate to have had two Lodge brothers have taken care of me on the medical side. Dr. Carol Kratzer of the Raleigh Orthopedic Clinic and Jim Parson, my interns. Dr. Kratzer mended me when I broke my foot trying to go through a door at the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, 
and Jim Parsons is taking care of my colds, my flu, and even my high, my high blood pressure. Um, I must not forget my annual attachment at the hip, Rick Tate. Um, for 33 years the, since the first oyster roast and now the oyster roast and golf tournament, it is a fundraiser. I know that y'all think it's the Rick and you know, Reese show, but it truly is a fun, fundraiser. And it's through everybody's generosity at the oyster roast that I can tell you that the oyster roast fundraiser through the life of the 33 years has contributed in excess of $100,000 to this house. So everybody that donated. It's a fundraiser, and it's held the last Saturday in April every year. That's this April, it'll be the 26th, Saturday, April 26th. Mark down your calendar, Oyster Roast, April the 26th. And Friday night, we've also started having a, a get-together where we invite the brothers and their wives, and we've all had it out at restaurants. This year, on the 25th, we're going to have that dinner here at the fraternity house. So, wives and, and uh, Lodge brothers here on Friday night, Oyster Roast on Saturday, uh, the 25th and 26th. So, make sure and invite everybody else. Um, that brings me back to talk to you about our grand poobah. Everybody's talked about Howard a lot today, but I'm going to talk about Howard a little bit too. Um, very few people know this, but Howard in high school was a very good basketball athlete. Um, he wasn't necessarily a scholarship player, but he had a lot of heart and it's a pretty good talent. So he decided he would walk on to the North Carolina State Wolfpack basketball team. Held his own pretty well, to be honest with you. And it came down for a very difficult decision for Coach Norm Sloan. He only had, I think, 13 slots. You could only have 13 players. And it came down, he had two star players that he had to think about, either Howard and this other player. And, and fortunately for all of us at Wolfpack Nation, uh, Coach Sloan picked David Thompson instead of him. <laughs> 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 Howard did stay on to be part of the team and part of the national championship, but uh, that was a good, good choice. <laughs> Uh, Howard lives in Cary, I presume always will. Uh, he was married and living next door to this beautiful widowed lady his next door who had two small girls. When she decided she needed to start dating again, not knowing many guys, she came over to her next door neighbor, Howard. She said, Howard, I don't know many guys. Do you know anybody that I can at least go out on a date with? And Howard said, I know this guy. He will be really nice. He could take care of you. We can go to a football team, football game. There'll be 40,000 other people. It won't even be like a date, and you can meet somebody else there. <laughs> True story. That was October 13, 1980, and Howard's next door neighbor, I married four months later on February 14th, my wife Brenda. So without Howard, I wouldn't have my wonderful wife. Uh, I know this might seem to be a Reese Walter story, but it's truly a, a Beta Tall story. My relationships and my life have been a continuance of my Beta Tall collegiate days. Although the story, although this is my story, search your memories and feel that you will find the experiences similar to mine. That's it. All right. <laughs> Respect. Uh, special recognition we need to do now. The chapter house is not just a dream anymore. It is truly a reality. That reality is because of everyone gathered here today and through your generosity. That generosity must be coupled coupled with a drive and coordination that makes the dream real. I would like to recognize a special brother that without the, their, his commitment to both Sigma Nu and Beta Tau, this chapter house would still be a dream. That brother has been division commander, a grand marshal, Sigma Nu High Council as the vice regent, from that moved on to the region of Sigma Nu, elected the Sigma Nu Board of Trustees <coughs> in 2002, Sigma News representative to the NIC, was elected to NIC board in 2006 and became chairman of the NIC board in 2010. Sigma News uh, fifth point property board of directors and elected fifth point chairman in 2008. This individual has also been the president of the Beta Tall Corporation since 1977. At this point in time, I'd like to recognize Howard Pickett if he'd come forward. Unlike Omega Construction, you got everything here on time. Um, we don't have this, but every year the Brotherhood's going to vote for the annual Brother of the Year, and that brother will go on a plaque to be the Howard Pickett Beta Tall Brother of the Year in Howard's recognition for his hard work. I need uh, the words, both Randy.
Cindy and Susan, please. I won't make you up here. I'll come down. Um, everybody here was invited because they made um, a financial sacrifice to help build this house. And um, we acknowledge that. I want everybody to make sure they come see the, the plaques. These will go in the foyer uh, upstairs uh, so that anybody that comes and visits the house and, and future brothers will know the kind of commitment that everybody here at the house that, that of our alumni have made. The two special recognitions. A, uh, Susan gets one and Randy gets one. But this, this is a special plaque that will go in. This is for them to take home. But there's an identical plaque that will go in the foyer um, talking about how much that y'all have done for the house and for Sigma Rock. So this is for you. This has got nothing to do with your pledging. Okay, I just want to let you know. But upstairs, if you'll notice, that when you go and do the tour, there'll be several oak chairs that have Sigma Nu in the back of them. And the very first one, though, that came off the assembly line, we'd like to present to Randy. And if y'all will notice, this is chair one of all of our chairs, and this is for you also to take home. We'll get to it. And let's see, Howard, you're up. Finally done. I have a few guests that I'd like to introduce that have come a long way to, to be here. Um, Mike Long is a close fraternity brother, although we didn't go to school together. He was the uh, 56th region of Sigma Nu, and he and I have been together at national events since 1982. Uh, his wife Kathy and, and Mike have Goose Creek Publishing that does all the certificates and the and for the fraternities and everything else. And so the plaques that you see today and everything else, his company did. So I appreciate what Mike did because Mike drove all of the composites. He redid all the composites and uh, preserved the composites for since the, we have one upstairs from 1927. So to Kathy and Mike, I appreciate your efforts. And everything else. Along, along the way in my Greek, Greek life, I, I met some fine women as far as the NPC is concerned. Um, Jean Morosik is now the chairperson of the uh, National Panhellenic Conference for, the, for all of the NPC. And Julie Johnson is the collegiate <coughs> panel um, person for the, for the Executive Council. Um, the other one is, the other two people are, are um, Kate Swicegood, who is um, on the Chi Omega Executive Council, who's here today, and Laura Helton, who is the Kappa Delta House Corporation officer next door. I mean, she helped me quite a bit trying to get things put together as far as trying to put the house together. And the other thing is my daughter's here with her husband and stepson, Everest. For everybody, this is it's finally done. What a day. Hope you can see the house and all the efforts to make it one of the finest fraternity houses east of the Mississippi. Before I talk about some of the special things that got incorporated into the house, I need to say thank you to the brothers and friends that met the, of their efforts to make this house truly special. To all the alumni who donated, a big thank you, thank you. A thank you is not sufficient enough for Jennifer Henson. As she looked and worked, we worked together for over one year to find financing which leads me to Mark Bolash and the people at Paragon Bank. Thanks an awful lot, Mark. They, they made this dream a reality. Andrea Stewart was great to work with during the construction phase, and I appreciate both Mark and Andrea for their efforts. To Eddie Gontra, a brother and an architect, thanks for seeing this project through, and I hope I wasn't too difficult to deal with during the <laughs> Oh, you were. <laughs> I'm sure I was. <laughs> to Dr. Woodson and the staff, I owe a debt of gratitude for making this work for Sigma Nu at NC State. Without a combined effort today, this would not be possible. Thanks for working with Paragon Bank to make this a reality. I especially want to thank Charlie Leffler for taking Richard's phone calls on many issues to be resolved. To Mary Pelican Dodd for working with us and seeing through this efforts. 
And I know that Lori Radford gave up her Christmas vacation in 2012 to get all the paperwork done so that we could close with the bank the first week of January, so I appreciate that. To Dr. Luckadoo and the staff at the Greek Life, and for all the efforts of our joint meetings in de December to iron out, I thank you and owe you a debt of gratitude as far as that. To Richard Vaughn, our construction consultant, and his efforts with Barry Hennings, Hennings at President of Omega Construction Company, without it, it wouldn't be here today. To Donnie Fletcher and Roger Nugent, the superintendent, you did a tremendous job to build a building that we all can be proud of. Charles Fox is not here today, but he and his associate at Fox Music House provided all the stereo equipment and some of the things that we'll speak of in a few minutes. Um, he helped make this house truly special. I'd also like to thank Elizabeth Samuels of Samuels Interiors who did the alumni library in the front lobby areas as well as, as, well as help with the color coordination of the house. And now for the special items in the house. As you walk up the walkway, you will notice the black granite with the gold letters Sigma Nu, which was given by Justin Brinkley of Brinkley Masonry, who was Richard Vaughn's personal brick mason for the last 20 years. On the porch are two nine brick coins on either side of the front steps. They're from the old Carolina Inn, in which a pledge class was, was required to go get and save and I saved out of the old house underneath the hearth for which Beta Tall was founded in 1895. So as you walk up the front steps, you walk and pass through where everybody else passed through when Beta Tall was founded in Sigma Nu in 1895. The badge is painted on the front floor of the vestibule by Susan Sereski. And when we had the floor company, then we had the floor company seal it so it would be here for eternity. There's a sound system throughout the house. There are four paging areas. There's surround sound for five TV areas and surround sounds for three, three areas outside. And I'm sure the university will end up talking to the commander pretty quickly about how, how the time is that going to end up being turned off. The furniture in all the bedrooms is solid oak with cherry stain. The second floor has cherry, cherry crown molding in every bedroom with an MP3 player for surround sounds. There are solid cherry closet doors and bathrooms for every two brothers in the house. We have two study areas on the second and third floor, and we currently are in the lead classroom, which doesn't have its table and chairs, which have been ordered, but it's also known as the Johnny Mac Alexander room. Our kitchen is a state-of-the-art kitchen with all Vulcan equipment, and, and off the kitchen is a floating patio. Last but not least is the front piece in the lobby is a, is a piece of art done and donated by the Chancellor's wife, Susan Woodson. I have commissioned Mike Jazak, who has painted quite a bit for Sigma Nu, to paint a three foot by five foot rendering of the three founders of Sigma Nu on the VMI parade ground to be hung above the stairs, which will not be ready till next fall. Mike figures it will take between seven and 100, 700 to 1,000 hours to paint it. And then the last thing that's pretty neat in the house is the lighted lantern portico, which Eddie designed in the front lobby. Please look at that at night because the beacon of light will always be shining. For me, this has been truly a labor of love. I've been here many times a week to meet with Roger, Donnie, and Eddie to see this through. You see, this was a dream of many to own your own house. That's all I heard when I was a pledge and a brother in the house. You see, my father was the faculty advisor from 59 to 62. And Chancellor Caldwell called him into the office to say, you will move on to the new Greek village in 1960. So we've come full circle where we owned our own house, gave it up to move on the university property, and now we own our own house now on the university property. So it feels great to know that 53, later, 53 years later, we've come full circle and we now own our own house. So now if Dr. Woodson, Randy Ward, Bobby Porter, and Barry Hennings will join me in the front lobby, we'll cut the ribbon to the house and then we can start, as Johnny Mack would want to call it, we can start the party. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, guys. We go ahead and gals, we go hook up. We'll say, brothers, this thing new. Come on, you pledges. Every damn one of you sons of bitches, get up here now. <laughs> Come on, Tony. Come on. Come on. We can wing the word. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Gals, hop in here, too. Yeah, come on. Oh, Cisco.
Oh 